Hi guys, I am back with another DIY video and today I'm going to show you how to redo a headboard with buttons on it. You might have seen this headboard in a video a few months ago where I tried to clean this fabric and I decided it was not working good enough. So it was a cleaning fail video. But today I'm going to have a, a DIY win for you. I'm going to show you how easy it is to actually reupholster a headboard like this. So I've already unscrewed the metal post that attached this headboard to my bed frame and I'm working on removing the dust cover. I am using needle nose pliers to remove the staples that attach that dust cover to my headboard. But you can also buy staple removers that might make it easier. I've just been using those needle nose pliers for jobs like this for so long that I'm really used to it and I, I kind of like it. But from what I hear, those staple removers actually make the job easier. So my dust cover is still in really good shape. So I am going to remove all of the staples and then just set it aside to put it back on later. But if your dust cover is falling apart and it's not in good shape, you can always buy dust covers. This exact fabric is sold at any fabric in a poultry store. So you'll be able to find it easily and it's pretty cheap. So once you have that dust cover fully removed and you've set it aside, you'll be able to see how the upholstery fabric is attached to the back of the headboard. So I want you to pay attention, when the factory makes these headboards, they use tons of staples all along the fabric and that dust cover. And that's exactly what I'm going to do when I put that upholstery fabric back on. I think if people make a mistake when they reupholster something, it's that they're not using enough staples. They think they can just put them every four or five inches and it's fine. Really, you want a staple about every inch. I'll show you how I do that in a minute but you want those staples placed close together because it's gonna keep a consistent tight hold on that fabric. If you have too few staples, if the staples are spaced too far apart, you might start to get little rips in the back of the fabric where one staple is doing the work where you needed eight staples instead. At this point, I had removed all of the staples that was holding the upholstery fabric in place. So I removed the fabric from all four sides and then lifted up the headboard just to make sure that the only thing holding the fabric on was the buttons now. So as you can see, it's just the buttons holding that fabric in place. So my next step is going to be removing the buttons. The best way to remove those buttons is to cut away the string from the back. I made the mistake of just letting it slip through the hole, lifting it up and letting it pop through the hole. That probably wasn't the best way to do it. I should have cut the string on the back here and then pulled the button off from the front. So in my case, I let the little metal bar that the string was attached to slide through, and then I flipped the headboard back over and cut the button away from the front. After I was able to cut all of the buttons away on the headboard, I was able to lift that upholstery fabric right off of the headboard. And as you can see, the loft batting and the foam on this headboard still looks like it's in really good condition. So I, in this case, I am saving this upholstery fabric, or I mean the foam and the loft batting that's on top of it. In some cases, those items might be shredded a little bit or dry rotted and they might need to be replaced. I have another video that might help you with that. I'll link to that above. But for right now, all I'm gonna do is put new fabric on this headboard and staple it back on. So let me show you how that works. I have the blue velvet fabric that I'm going to use lying face down on this tabletop. If you pick an upholstery fabric that needs to be ironed to look nice and smooth, then you would iron it before you did this step. I know with that blue velvet fabric, I'm going to be able to pull it tight and then wipe it smooth and it's going to look perfect, but most fabrics will need to be ironed before you do this. I'm using the old upholstery fabric. I'm lying that face down too on top of that blue velvet. So I know where to cut the blue velvet so that I get the right size for this headboard. And if you are using an upholstery fabric with a pattern on it, make sure that you have it lying in the direction that you want the pattern to go. So you don't wanna accidentally, of course, put that pattern on upside down, but you also don't want it to run sideways if it's supposed to run long ways. After I got that old upholstery fabric lined up nicely on top of the new fabric that I'm using, I was able to start cutting. So make sure when you're doing the cutting, you use a nice sharp pair of scissors. But other than that, this is not a very complicated step. And of course, my cat always likes to join in in all of my DIY projects around here. For this type of simple upholstered headboard, really cutting is the last step they have to do before you can start stapling the fabric back on. 
After clearing the old upholstery fabric out of the way, I lifted the headboard back onto the new fabric that I'm going to be using to upholster the headboard. Then I lined everything up so that I was ready to start stapling. Make sure that you pull that fabric nice and tight underneath the headboard. You don't want to accidentally leave the fabric too loose or looking wrinkly or not tight enough. You want that fabric lying nice and tight underneath the headboard before you start stapling. For these no sew upholstery projects, I like to work on one side of the headboard or the bench or whatever I'm upholstering at a time. So I'm gonna staple this short side and then move to the opposite side, again, pulling the fabric tight. I don't staple the corners at all, so I'll leave this the corners staple free for about four or five inches up each side on the corners. I do those last after all four sides are stapled. I'm using a heavy duty stapler that is meant for projects like this, but I will tell you that this is a cheaper option stapler, but it is harder on your hand. You can get more expensive options that will be a little bit easier on your hand and won't wear your hand out as much. So I'll link to some of those in, in the description of the video. After I finished stapling all of that one short side, I moved to the exact opposite side and before I started stapling, I pulled the fabric underneath nice and tight. So you make sure it's, you've got a nice tight fit on that fabric and it's also nice and smooth before you start stapling that second side. I'm gonna show you a bunch of this stapling so that you can get a good feel about exactly how this works before you start your project. But just pay attention that to um, how I am pulling the fabric nice and tight with one hand while I staple with the other. So I'm making sure that that fabric doesn't get wrinkled up, bunched up, it's nice and tight while I'm stapling it on. It's something that you can get a feel for after you work on a few upholstery projects, but if you make a mistake, don't worry, get your staple remover and remove a few, sta few staples and just redo that small area. Don't put too much pressure on it. Um, this is really an easy project, guys, and if you just take your time, you'll get it right. Once I got the two short sides done, I moved on to a long side. So I worked all along the long side. Again, put a staple once every inch. You want to have that fabric supported by a lot of staples so that you don't get any chance of a rip happening. With the long side done, I could do the corners after that where the long side that's completed meets the two short sides. So let me show you a close up of how I do a corner. When I start working on a corner, the most important thing to remember is to keep the side and the top of the headboard looking perfect and nice and smooth. So I try to play around with the fabric and staple it down in a way so that I don't have any wrinkles or puckering on the sides at all. You'll see in a minute that I am going to fold the fabric under in a way that puts a line right at the corner of that headboard. So whenever I do this no sew approach to um, upholstering anything, I want to put a folded crease right on the corner of something. And I want it to look nice and clean and neat. So really all of that I'm doing is playing around with the fabric until I see it laying in a nice way where it still looks good wherever you'll see it and everything is hidden on the back as far as the folding and the layering of the fabric to get it that nice crease on the corner. You'll notice that on this corner, I have a lot more fabric here than I actually need. So generally, I like to keep the fabric at least an inch past the staples, but you don't need much more than that to have a nice secure stapled down fabric. So my 3 8 inch long staples were having a hard time going through all of those layers. So I grabbed my needle nose pliers and removed one of the staples and then cut away some of that excess, excess fabric so that my staples could hold down all of that fabric easily without it working too hard. You'll notice in a minute that I also grab a hammer and hammer in some of the staples. So if you feel like your staples aren't going in all the way, grab a hammer and hammer them in just like you would a nail. In fact, after I do any staple projects, I go over all of the staples after I'm done with the hammer just to make sure that they're in as deep as they can go. You might not need a hammer if you're using some sort of pneumatic stapler or something with a little bit of power behind it, but since mine is a basic stapler, um, I always do the hammer just in case. That's pretty much it for the corners. Just make sure that whenever you're doing it, you're making sure that the sides and the top of your headboard look perfect and there's no folding or lumpy fabric. After finishing up that first corner, I moved on and finished that fourth side that still needed to be done and the rest of the corners. So it's basically the same exact thing and I've already showed you. I won't waste any more of your time showing you the stapling. 
we'll move on to making buttons. I don't make buttons very often, so I went with one of those cheapy button making kits that you can find in the stores for like five or six bucks. They come in a variety of button sizes, so I just bought the same size as the buttons that were on my headboard before. You can just measure your old buttons with a ruler and it'll tell you the exact measurement you need. I ended up making all eight buttons with this cheap kit, but that cheap kit wasn't really doing a great job with the thick velvet fabric that I chose. So some of your upholstery fabrics won't be as thick as my velvet, but if they are, you're probably gonna need or want a um, more expensive button making kit. I'm not gonna go into too much detail about how to make buttons. The instructions are on the kit. All of them are gonna be a little bit different than each other, so follow the directions that come with your button making kit. Once you have all of your buttons made, you are ready to start putting them back on your headboard. So if you see that giant needle in my hand, that is an upholstery needle that is designed for projects like this. You want to use a pretty heavy duty thread for that so it's strong enough to hold that button in place. I didn't have any in, in my house, so I went with embroidery floss, which is pretty thick and heavy duty as it is. Again, I will link to everything that I used and you'll need for this project in the description below. Now, I didn't get great video about how I did these buttons. I will show you what it looks like from the front side, but you want to make sure that your buttons are going in into the exact same place where they were originally before. So feel around for the indent in your foam to make sure your needle's going through in the right place before it goes all the way through. Once I pulled that upholstery needle through, I left some of that heavy duty thread, um, embroidery floss in my case, hanging on the front so that I could tie the button onto the front. I should have left some extra, so don't make it as short as I did. It'll be easier if you have a lot extra in the front and the back hanging off. I tied my button onto the front, made sure I had a bunch of knots and it was super secure because it's gonna get a little bit of, it's gonna be pulled on. It needs to be held nice and tight to get that pretty look that you want on your upholstered headboard. After getting that button attached to the front, I tied a washer onto the back side of the headboard. So the washer is bigger than the hole. It's not going to go through the hole. And I tightened, I, I tied it nice and tight on the back so that those buttons look like they're being pulled, creating that nice dimpled look that you want with the buttons. So then after that, I just stapled that original dust cover back on, reattached my legs, and my headboard was ready to go back to work. Okay guys, that is it for how to redo a headboard with buttons. I'll link to some more of my upholstery tutorials in the description below and up above. Check those out. They might help you answer any questions. If you have other questions, put those in the comments and I'll try to get to them when I can. Thanks guys.